Hello everyone, thank you for watching uh, this month's vlog um, which will focus on the issue or topic of bathing and sleep. It's a really fascinating subject, the link, the correlation between bathing and sleep. And as much as we might be aware that we use bathing as part of a sleep-based routine, often within families uh, with young children predominantly, um, although I think we need to clear why that is, um, there is that question of do we understand the physiological reasons that how bathing supports sleep. Um, so we understand that routine is incredibly important for young children for a number of different reasons. But physiologically there are things that happen when we bathe, and by bathe I mean submerge in water, uh, that happen to us that um, encourage sleep and quality sleep at that across all age groups. Um, it's a really fascinating subject. It's really important that as occupational therapists we understand what the research says so that we can include that evidence um, within our clinical reason processes and ultimately our recommendations to support bathing. Um, I picked this topic this month. It's something that I've looked at a lot over the last year uh, for Abacus um, and developed presentations around, which can all be found on the Abacus Academy site. Um, but on the 19th of, of March, it's World Sleep Day, so it felt like a really appropriate time uh, to, to reinforce the message. For people who um, are new to the subject, the physio phys physiological elements um, uh, are around the link with the um, Circadian process. Um, and, and it's about how bathing and being submerged in water um, raises the core body temperature, which then allows for a more rapid reduction in body temperature post bathing, and it's that more rapid drop in body temperature that induces sleep. Um, and we can help to manipulate the circadian process um, uh, to induce sleep when we want it. Um, so the, the, the research um, predominantly research that I talk about in some of the presentations on the Abacus Academy site focus um, around a review of, of a number of bits of evidence and research conducted by the University of Texas, which looked at over 5,000, in fact it was over 5,300 research studies around sleep and water. And from that review, they were able to actually pinpoint um, some guidance around when people should bathe to support sleep and not only that what temperature the water should be at and how they measured what the success of that was. Um, so it's really interesting as occupational therapists we know what the research and recommendations are from that again so we can build that into our evidence-based practice and ultimately to to inform our clinical reasoning processes. The information on all those bits of research is on the Abacus Academy website under bathing and sleep, drawing the dots, and we'll also be hosting a webinar on the to on the topic uh, later in March. So please make sure you take a look. Um, uh, but the evidence is there to support that bathing absolutely supports sleep. And then what we look at is what does sleep do? So occupationally, from an occupational perspective, how does um, being able to support a good quality night's sleep. What are the impacts on engagement and meaningful activity uh, that, that, ha that that has? Ultimately, so that you can build a case around supporting bathing for sleep, but then the impact of sleep on that person's engagement and meaningful activity. Um, so this is kind of a um, an introduction to that topic. Um, it's, it's a fascinating subject with a lot of information on the Abacus Academy website and like I say, more to come later in March to support World Sleep Day on the 19th. So take a look on the website and uh, I look forward to seeing you at the webinar um, later in March. Thank you.